Welcome back to a new episode of Animal of the Week. I know it's been a while, but don't worry, I am not dead. I've been working on an almost 50 minute long documentary about the life and legacy of Peter the Great of Russia, which has taken quite a bit of time, mixed with returning to school. If you have any interest in history and Russia, you can view the video on my personal channel, Ollie M. Thomas, linked below and at the end of the video. Anyway, in today's video, we'll be looking at a truly bizarre and unique mollusk, the leaf sheep. It's not surprising where the name comes from, as it does bear a rather strong resemblance to some sort of sheep, with its small beady eyes, and though it certainly isn't wool, its back does look like some sort of sheep's coat. Other observations have concluded that it also looks like an artichoke. However, this is actually a type of sea slug, so sadly not a sheep or an artichoke. It is also vastly smaller than a sheep or an artichoke, only growing to a maximum of one centimetre in length. It is a member of the family Costasylidae, a family of incredibly small sea slugs, but you would be wrong to assume they are some sort of nudibranch, no matter how strong they resemble them. All nudibranchs are sea slugs, but not all sea slugs are nudibranchs, and these sea slugs are not nudibranchs. But there is something very, very special that makes these slugs worthy of a video, and I will reveal it soon. As these are sea slugs, the leaf sheep lives in the sea. Despite having leaf in its name, it lives quite far from any leaves. Though I suppose you could argue that seaweed has leaves, but these are not really true leaves. They are primarily found off the coast of Japan, Indonesia, and the Philippines, in relatively shallow waters capable of sustaining large amounts of algae and sea plants. The reason they require shallow waters with sunlight and algae is all because of their diet. They feed upon algae and bits of phytoplankton, however it doesn't just stop there. The very very special thing that makes these sea slugs worthy of a video is their ability to photosynthesize. This is known as kleptoplasty. Kleptoplasty is the process by which the actual chloroplasts from the plant or algae are literally stolen by an animal when they feed. The word kleptoplasty literally comes from a combination of klepto, Greek for thief, and plasty, as in chloroplast. This ability to sequester the chloroplasts allows the leaf sheep to survive off energy from photosynthesis for many months with no solid food being consumed. However, the leaf sheep is not entirely unique in this ability. Some other sea slugs can also photosynthesize. The emerald green sea slug is another such slug that has the ability of kleptoplasty. These slugs look far more the part than the leaf sheep as they actually look like leaves. Now it's not entirely certain how the leaf sheep breeds, however as they are sea slugs it is not unreasonable to assume that they will reproduce much the same as many other sea slugs. Some sea slugs mate using the wonderfully weird penis fencing technique, where each individual is neither male nor female and they will fight to impregnate the other so that they do not have to carry the burden of egg laying. Other sea slugs are able to mate with themselves if they so choose. A lot of sea slugs that have this ability also use the penis fencing technique and will only mate with themselves if they are truly desperate, as asexual reproduction produces by diversity in the species. As the leaf sheep is part of the group Opistobranchia, they are all hermaphrodites, and therefore it is almost certain that they use these two methods of reproduction. Obviously the ability to photosynthesize is a rather important and amazing adaptation, but what other adaptations do the leaf sheep possess? The main adaptation is its body shape. The artichoke-like layers that the slug's abdomen is made up of increase its surface area dramatically. These actually have a special name, they are known as serrata. Just as a leaf needs a large surface area in order to maximize its ability to photosynthesize, so do the leaf sheep. You may also notice that it has quite translucent skin. This allows more light to penetrate the skin when underwater. The long antenna-like appendage protruding from the sea sheep's face are called rhinophores and are special sensory organs used to smell out algae to eat. Now it isn't fully known what eats these particular sea slugs in the wild, however as they are sea slugs they most likely face similar threats to all other sea slugs in the ocean. Lobsters, crabs, fish big and small, even turtles have been known to consume them. As these little sea slugs are a mere centimetre long at most, they have little chance of survival against any sort of predators. Humans obviously don't directly hunt or kill leaf sheep owing to their tiny size, however we may still be having a huge effect on them. You have seen that the leaf sheep's primary source of food is algae, and anthropogenic climate change is having Having all sorts of effects upon algae. Increasing global temperatures and higher levels of atmospheric CO2 is causing more algae due to warmer waters and more CO2 increasing the rate of photosynthesis and causing massive blooms. So all is good, right? Sadly not. As climate change gets worse and worse, more and more algae means more heat is trapped in the water, as algae acts as an insulator, and the huge amount of respiration by the algae means more energy being transferred into the waters around the algae. This in turn acts as a positive feedback loop, creating warmer water for 
for more algae and so on and so on. But these large algal blooms block out sunlight from reaching below the surface in a process called eutrophication. Essentially, in the short term, sea sheep will have an amazing time with plenty of algae and warm waters. However, in the long term, the impacts of climate change will start to be detrimental. Water's too warm and the sea slugs won't survive. Algae blotting out the sunlight and the sea slugs can't photosynthesize. And add in ocean acidification and things aren't looking too good. Not only for the sea slugs, but almost all life on Earth. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you'd like to see more from us.